Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon uh, to all of you wherever you're watching this from, uh, either live now with us or on demand. Thank you for joining. Uh, let us know where you're watching this from. Uh, it's always nice to see uh, here from the community uh, what, what you're, uh, you know, where you're from, what you're currently doing, what excites you. Um, and particularly very welcome to Jesus. Uh, uh, thank you for joining uh, me today uh, to this new series we're just launching today, uh, Going Meta, a series on graph semantics and knowledge. Thank you, Jesus, for joining and welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Alex. I know we've been talking about doing these for quite a while and we've finally made it. So that's, yes. <laughs> that's been in, the, in the plan for quite a while. So I'm really, really excited. I'm really happy to be here and, and, and really looking forward to it. So, um, yeah, that's great. Great to be here. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Jesus. Uh, yeah, we talked about this uh, quite a while and then it kind of uh, didn't happen. But now I'm I'm the more the more happier I am now that it, that it worked out uh, and, we, and we can kick this off. Close to a, a, a New Year's resolution kind of. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry, but it's not too bad. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 I mean, we kind of missed January by, by one day, but it's, it's I think it's fine. <laughs> Nearly perfect. Nearly perfect. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, let's um, let's maybe give give this a uh, quick quick intro of what's uh, what what's to be expected uh, from from this series and what kind of like uh, is 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 going to be the uh, the, the the topic uh, while people are are, are chiming in from uh, Virginia, USA, Slovenia, Spain, Barcelona. A couple of people from Spain. You have your. Your 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 fans are around, oh, uh, Jesus. Well, definitely. <laughs> well, I've, I've, I've tweeted, tweeted a couple of times about this because, yeah, no, yeah. of course, I, I think it would be great to to yeah to spend two minutes to to talk about what we plan to to cover. Well, first of all, we we're doing this monthly, right? So we started, so we're we're not stopping now. So the, no. the, <laughs> the the plan is well, probably you 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 will be better than me to to share the you know the the, the housekeeping and the and the kind of. Uh, general of, of of the of the series, but the in terms of the you know the content, uh, I mean, uh, we we hear a lot uh, uh, about uh, about knowledge graphs these days, right? Knowledge uh, uh, knowledge typically as, is associated with things like semantics, like uh, uh, ontologies, right? Yeah, quite uh, uh, adequate this this screen capture. So all, all these all these topics that sometimes are used in a in a rather I, I, I think uh, ambiguous or, or not very clear way and because this is the the uh, at least that's what you told me Alex this is a series for practitioners for people who do things who build things right so absolutely yes yes the, the the intention was to 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 really rather than talk about these things the way uh, you know sometimes it's done is to show what these things mean in reality right so uh, these uh, topics that I mentioned, things like semantics. What, what does it mean? What, what's semantics, right? What, what do we mean when we say that a, a, a graph is a semantic graph? What do we mean when we say that we're making knowledge explicit in our in our graph? What does that look like? And and uh, uh, what what is interoperability? All these sort of topics that are always in this kind of meta side, and that that's that's where the title uh, comes from. But uh, looking at all these aspects is what I was particularly interested in, and. Um, and the idea is to make them uh, very hands-on sessions, as in, you know, we're talking about this topic, but we're going to show you what it looks like. And and ideally, and, and today is going to be uh, the first experiment, we're going to uh, uh, do a bit of live coding and, and, and showing uh, what uh, what the experience of someone who, who, who approaches these would be like. So that, that's that's the kind of the, the, the background. So we'll touch on many of these topics. And, and we have an idea. We have a, a, a bunch of... of uh, uh, subjects for the coming sessions, but of course uh, we'd love to hear from from uh, from the attendees. And if there's something that you're interested in and you think that has not been covered uh, in you know in, in any other any other channel or something that we have talked about or someone else has said about, uh, of, of course within this area of, of semantics, uh, knowledge graphs, etc., uh, would be keen to 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 talk about it and to cover it and to and to give our our view and our our practitioners view about it so that's that's i, I don't know does that align with what you think alex is that did I leave totally yeah 
Yes, exactly. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. I think that's that's great, and I think that's exactly what 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 we're going to do, right? Hands on, as as usual, we try to to make this practitioner practi practicable and uh, and and you know try. We, we we show you something, and you can try this yourselves if you if you wanna wanna follow up or follow on along afterwards. And yeah, your your intro was was perfect. I mean, I, I I you know searched around the internet a little bit before, just you know when 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 you read the topic, uh, graph semantics knowledge graph um uh, implied here is is uh is, is what, what do you get and what you find i mean obviously you find these wikipedia entries i i, I shared here uh, ontology and semantics uh which which is lots of text but then if, if you go go on a on an image search what what if you type in ontology what do you get you get these these kinds of images um i mean unsurprisingly to us but Maybe to other to to you, to other people in 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 the audience here, I think this is all of these images are kind of graphs really, and this is what you get uh, in in by looking at at ontology. And ontology doesn't really imply it as much from from the word in itself, or the same uh, goes to semantics. You get a couple of word trees or word clouds mm -hmm. rather, where where they kind of you know put together. But then again. Here, this is great. I think. I mean, this is this is a random hit, but here, things semantics means things plus relationships. So, I mean, what 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 is it? It is a graph, right? <laughs> yeah, because absolutely, we, we we will see that under under it. I mean, the the underlying, you know, uh, how how to call it, the underlying abstraction, the way to represent knowledge, the way to 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 make use of it is by using the abstraction, the graph abstraction, things connected to things. And and, and that's what, uh, I mean, we're going to be seeing a lot of that, of course. But I, I, I think, you know, you, you're right, Alex. I mean, there's plenty of plenty of material online, but there's, uh, I would put it in two categories. I mean, there's there's the, the, the probably high level or not, you know, where they stay at the surface and, and you still kind of ask yourself, but what, what does they really, what do they really mean? And <laughs> yes. you know, if I want to make, you know, an ontology, fine. They tell, they show me a, the, a taxonomy is an example of, a, a, of an ontology. But once I have it, what do I do with it? I mean, what's mm -hmm. you know? Sometimes the, it's incomplete information, and then even worse is when you know when vendors and we might be guilty of that sometimes when vendors use it in a, in a kind of biased way, in a, in a in a way that only confuses the people who who want to get an understanding and then make informed decisions. So that's why we you know uh, our humble you know objective is to, is to try and 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 show it, and by showing it, but. People will make their own uh, their own decisions and 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 hopefully get a better understanding of some of these topics as as we as we go along. So so that's that's the plan. Yeah, totally. And uh, and if you're wondering who who is this Jesus Barasa who is who is uh, oh. who is talking <laughs> talking uh, about about this and why does he why does he know all this? He I mean uh, you can you can you can say a few words about yourselves as well. But uh, Jesus is around with Neo4j for for quite a while, a couple of years now. And he is sort of our resident uh, semantics ontologies uh, slash RDF expert, really in in in, in Neo4j. Um, and this is a blog article. I will I will post this in chat in a, in a second. But this is something he you did right, Jesus, in a That's right. posted this yeah. uh, well exactly, almost two years ago now. But but yeah. but still, it's it's. Uh, it's it's very heavy on 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 all the details, and you did a presentation at a Graph Connect uh, about about all this. Um, and we're not repeating this. Don't don't we don't we don't we do new stuff, right? But we we kind of like I want just wanted to make sure that everybody knows you you really understand this topic and you are the expert on on the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that that's true. Thanks for that. Actually, I, I would say I mean, jbarasa.com is also where, where I uh, often blog, and 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 there's a lot of content on that. But yes, I, I've been quite you know prolific on 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 trying to 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 bridge the two worlds because we're going to go into that right so when we talk about semantics about ontologies there's kind of the usual uh divide between you know the rdf the the, the community and and the and the property graph community and and uh, and um and we'll see that there's not you know necessarily a a, a big gap uh, and there's loads of things that have one leg on each side and and uh, but yeah like like you say i, I happen to have spent many many years uh, uh, on, actually, on both sides, right? So I started my career. I did my PhD actually in in in, um, in knowledge representation and used a lot of RDF mm -hmm. and ontologies back in the day, and started my then my professional career after that, working uh, you know with a company that used the, the RDF stack to uh, to to represent. Uh, they did focus on 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 the telco or vertical, so they they in specifically in, in network management. So they would model things like network topologies and 
and and that was you know very nicely represented as a, as a graph we used rdf at the time and and, and we tried to answer questions like uh, uh, you know things around impact analysis root cause analysis exploring uh, the, the the topology of uh, but then you know uh, years later uh, and and it's already been yeah, quite a while, six, I think six, more than six years that I've been with Neo4j. Well, I've had uh, the same uh, level of experience, but now on the property graph side. So I think, yeah, I, I have a, a reasonable amount of experience on both sides. And today is going to be a, a bit of a you know show off on, on that because I've, I've written, written quite a bit of, of queries, both on, on, on Sparkle and in my RDF times and, and on Cypher uh, these days with Neo4j. And, and we thought that, and, and jumping on today's topic, that it would be a good start to uh, to talk about, um, you know, these two basic uh, formalisms uh, of, of representing data uh, um, have different uh, query languages. And, and today's session is, is all about, uh, um, you know, putting them side by side and, and showing uh, with, a, with an example, a public example, what it feels like, what it's like for a practitioner, for someone who wants to to analyze uh, data uh, in one and the other uh, graph um, uh, formalism, if you want. So, and and we've chosen uh, before I go into into the the slides, uh, uh, we've chosen a public data set, which is the the um, the British Library catalog. So that, that that's I mean, in a minute we'll be sharing uh, the the um, the link because that's like I said, public and you can access it and, and play along with us today. But um, the idea is that so there's there's this public data set that we have imported into Neo4j and we have it now in a property graph that's Neo4j. It's in a triple store in the in the British Library, and we're going to be running the same set of queries on both sides and and see what the, what it looks like. But uh, before mm -hmm. we get into into that, maybe let's spend two minutes uh, on the on the slide that uh, that we have in uh, on the screens at the moment. So. I assume, of course, I mean, I'm not going to do a, a, an introduction to the basics of both query languages and the models. So I assume that people are a little bit familiar about them. Uh, and, uh, well, and, and in any case, well, you can also be a, a, a kind of a, a curious new joiner, Alex. So if there's anything that you, you think that's going to be me, like, exactly. <laughs> yes. just you just define my role here. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So, so uh, totally, totally uh, open to to be interrupted, and 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 by all means do that because it's going to be more interesting. But where do we start from? And and, and this uh, kind of uh, slide describes uh, what a um, uh, a graph model will look like in a property graph, and then we're going to show what it looks like in in an RDF graph. So a, a very simple scenario, right? So there's a real world uh, situation where we have an individual working for a, an organization for a company. And, uh, and we want to formalize that using using a graph, right? So the, uh, the first model that you see in front of you is, is what we call the pro property graph. And the important thing to understand about the property graph is that the building blocks of a property graph are nodes and relationships, right? That's it. So when you have an entity, that will typically uh, be represented as a node. And that's how you see uh, two nodes representing the entity, the person, and the company. And then there will be a relationship that connects the two, saying that this person works for this organization. That's it. As simple as that. I mean, this is reasonably close to the way we humans think, right? We think in terms of entities, right? We, and that sort of translates naturally into nodes and relationships. That's the kind of thing that you would put on a whiteboard. And then entities yep. will have, uh, we call them internal structure, but a, a set of, 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 of characteristics, of attributes, right? So there's this entity that's the person, and the person will, will, will have a name, a date of birth, and so on and so forth. And the same for the organization. Even the connection can have some attributes, right? So I work for this organization from that date or with that role or whatever additional information. So that's that's the that's the, the property graph model. And the building blocks, like I say, are nodes and relationships. And that has an implication on the query language because the way we query it is very close to these uh, building blocks, to these primitives, we want to call them in the, in, the, in, the, in the property graph model. Because what you see there, and it's a bit of a... Um, uh, in, in advance of what we're going to see in a minute, it's a Cypher query. Cypher is the query language that we use in Neo4j, uh, the most popular one in, in, in property graphs. And it looks, it's very visual, as you can see there. And we kind of replicate, we, we, we try to redraw the, 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 the schema that you see on top, right? So you say, when I uh, ask the database the question, who, uh, who does JB work for? Well, what I have to do is say, well, there's an entity uh, that I... Uh, look up by by name in this case by jb 
that's connected to another entity and that's how we use uh, the 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 square brackets in the middle and, and the arrow pointing to to something else and that's kind of a, a, a an immediate or an identical uh, replica of the of the diagram that you see on top and the answer to that query that's valid cipher as we're going to see in a minute would return what is this c which is an entity a node with a set of properties and would be the answer to that question so it's a pretty and my message here before we go into the code is that this is a quite high level model so we talk in terms of entities nodes and relationships now let's move on to the same scenario but uh in if we try to model it uh, using the rdf uh, uh approach uh, the the uh, an rdf graph so first of all we see that it's kind of an explosion of information but let, before we, <laughs> we look at the graph the, the important thing is kind of we are going a bit deeper right so it's a kind of a lower lower level representation of the world because the the building block here is no longer the entity is the statement the triple as it's called so it's like okay. we break information down in small atoms of of of, uh, of information which are these statements so we we will say things like you know there's an individual that is a person there's an individual that has the same individual because we identify it with a, with a, with a, a, an id there that has a name uh, he also has a date of birth he also has a, a degree he works for an organization and like this you know we have a, a collection of of statements or triples as, as they are called that connected to each other happen to form a graph and that's the one that you see on the screen as you can see it's a, it's a much more verbose if you want graph because here we don't aggregate uh, around an entity all its characteristics we explode them and even things like the name or the or the date of birth so the values of the attributes become nodes in the graph so it's uh, it's uh, i like to think of it as as this uh it's equivalent in terms of the represent the data that it holds but it's kind of a lower level representation and the implication that it has on when you query it is as you can see there that you have to replicate this lower level step by step uh uh traversal of the graph right so the same query here who does jb work for you have to say well Let's give it a variable name, this P for a person. Uh, uh, there's something that is a person. The same something has a name, JB. The same something works for C. Then C uh, has a name, and this C uh, is, a, is an organization, and we get the attribute. So it's uh, um, equivalent in a way, but uh, uh, the way I think about it, and, and you tell me if it makes sense to you, Alex, is like, um, you know, maybe it's a bit of an exaggeration, but you know, it's like I, I write code in Python, but then it gets, uh, well, or Java for that matter, and then it gets compiled to kind of lower level machine level instructions, uh, assembly code in the old times, right? So <laughs> you can you can express the same thing, but it, you do it at different levels. And, you know, in general, and, and based on, on, on my experience, people tend to feel somehow, you know, more comfortable at the low, at the higher level. But we'll we'll see that because that's an, that's a, that's a statement. We'll try to prove it with some examples and that's what we're going to see from here. But yeah. how's that for introduction? That, that's very good. I I just yeah, it, I think it's actually right what you just said. I mean, it's 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 everything it's, it's a little bit more it's 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 simpler but also more more complicated at the same time for some reason. So it's 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 because if everything is what if I understood it correctly, every every property kind of of every every attribute has to have one is 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 defined in one one single line so you you always have like I said id one two three four is name and then equals jb and then another line it's a person it's a state of birth is 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 occupation and stuff it's everything is is one line versus with the the other graph model we showed before it's like more we combine logical things together and put them in one in in one entity together and and yeah. That, that's that's true and 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 probably we'll, we'll not go too deep into that but there, there is a reason for this because you know rdf was you know conceived many years ago 20 20 something years ago at the end of the of the century as mm -hmm. as the foundation for what was called the semantic web right and the semantic web was a way of i mean this vision uh, of uh representing the information in the web in a machine a consumable in a machine processable ma ma manner and, oh, and the assumption was the data was fragmented and distributed. So uh, maybe the information about JB lives on, in, in one web page and the information about Neo4j lives in another place. So you have to be able to, to have fragments of it in many different places. Actually, a lot of the use of RDF is embedded in, in HTML pages. So the idea of breaking it down in small 
snippets, and, and the, the smallest one is a statement, a triple, did work very well for this idea of distributedly owned data sets and fragmented, that you can bring them all together. But what we're going to see, and, and again, this is a, probably a longer conversation that we might <laughs> say for a session. But for the idea is that, movie, yeah. Yeah. exactly, what, what, what we want to see today is what is the implication for a data person, for a, for a, for a practitioner, when uh, you work with data represented as RDF, compared as the same data represented in a property graph. So they both have the, their history and probably will skip that today. Uh, but that's, that's, the, that's what the models look like. And uh, if, uh, if that's okay, maybe what we can do is... Uh, yeah. Let's maybe, Invite. before we do that, one, one question I think was, was quite interesting from Anand in chat. And he, he maybe if we, can, if we touch on this briefly, is, is what, what kind of use case is good for RDF? And what, maybe we're touching on this again. What kind of use case is, is, is good for property graph? I know this is kind of like a, always a difficult question. Yeah. We don't want to say this is, you want to use this for this and this for that, because this is like... And we also don't want to yeah. say it depends, but but actually it depends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and and, and yeah. you know, I, I wanted to avoid these kind of questions today because it, you know, uh, it, it's uh, um, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of uh, um, kind of implications for uh, not, not. I mean, today we're face we're looking at the model and how we query it and what's the experience of a, of a data person uh, looking at at, at the. Uh, working with with data in one and the other model, but then another very important question is, you know, what's the store that's holding that data? You know, RDF uh, uh, actually uh, uh, it's defined as a as a model for data exchange, so you can persist RDF in a triple store, which is kind of the natural uh, way because triple stores are are specialized data stores to hold uh, triples. You can hold RDF in a relational database and have a bridge that exposes it as RDF. You can so. And depending on what you have behind, what's the backend, and depending what's your use case, I mean, it's not just the model, because uh, um, I would say the RDF uh, uh, enables interoperability, because we, we will probably not so much today, but in coming sessions, see how we can use standard vocabularies. But again, RDF is something that can be put on top of other stores. So let me not answer that question today. Let me put that one on hold. And let's yeah. focus because that can be a very long and convoluted one. And and uh, so let's focus on the model. Let's focus on on the on the data management. And and we'll get back to that when, once we discuss more more on on, on both aspects. Uh, I think that makes perfect sense. We 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 kind of show. We, we, yeah, exactly like you just said. We we show what the differences are. And we show what the what the different approaches are. And then we, you 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 can form your your own opinions. And and we can, we you know yeah. I think that's a good idea. Let's. Um, um let's dive in um, Jesus, um and so, uh, and see what um uh what we want to do today sure okay so can we see my screen perfect okay so what you have in front of you is kind of i've tried to split my screen in two parts right to the left you have a public url that i think alex can can share on the on the chat but it's yep. the british library uh, uh sparkle endpoint if you want so uh, if you go to that URL, you get something like this. And, um, and it's, I mean, it's a bit particular as a, as, a, as a UI, but I'll try to use this one today. So this Flint uh, Sparkle editor, where we can write our Sparkle queries and run them and see the results. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Um, I hope that's readable. I mean, it's uh, a bit um, uncomfortable in a way because, you know, the, the, I try to stretch the, the size of the so that it fits on the screen and we can see the queries on both sides. But uh, well, that's the that's what it looks like. And and it, as you see, it it offers a number fine. of good. Okay, a number of of canned queries that are the ones that I've you know I've used as inspiration to work on today. So let's uh, empty that and start from scratch. And what you see on the right hand side is uh, um, um, let me make that a bit smaller so that we see the two is the uh, the Neo 4 j browser. Right. So, and what I've done, and we, uh, you, you kind of do it now, but we'll give you instructions on how to do it. Is I've loaded the the because this is a public data set, so you can download it from the British Library website. So I've imported the catalog into Neo4j, and uh, as you can see, it's a, a database which is pretty large. So it's 20 million nodes. So quite a significant uh, number, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, 87 million relationships. So I think it, it was a few hundred uh, million uh, triples uh, uh, the the import. So this is this is done. I mean, we'll maybe another session again talk how you know move data from one to the other. 
but let's assume that the da both databases are loaded and we're going to mm -hmm. start querying them and see and see what that looks like right and the first query that you saw so it's basically the, just just to make sure that everybody sure. understands so this is kind of like the book catalog or the li the, the, the library catalog of all the books in in uh, in the british library um That's they have correct. digital yeah good and and let's uh, um let's um actually start by showing a bit of what i mean the at least the part of the, of the model that we're going to be looking at so if if i start in fj i'll um i'll look for i mean there's a uh, people there's uh, a person node that represents the authors that are mm -hmm. connected to uh, books so we see that and i think that the relationship that connects them is uh, a creator there you go there's the inverse as well sometimes in rdf you see both so uh, a book has a creator and the person is creator of but basically uh, a book has a creator or multiple ones and um, uh, a book um, has also uh, subjects that will be uh, categories, I believe. So it has a subject that will be, um, is it, um, I believe, uh, uh, is it a category or concept maybe? Yeah. Concept, yeah. So if we uh, put that in a, in a path and we return that path and we limit it to three, for example. That should give us a, a, a small look. There's an Alexander here. There you go. Good so choice. Let, <laughs> exactly. So let me make it. So you see that um, the, the, the this note represents the the um, the um, person, the author. That's the uh, creator of two works. I mean, it's not only two, but I've, I've uh, uh, limited it to 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 three paths, which are the ones that you see. And then uh, the books will have subjects, uh, which are these topics. Some there's plenty of classifications there uh, in the British Library, and some are numeric because they link to. Uh, in this case, uh, well, this is. Uh, you, you will notice that all the all the elements in this uh, graph uh, can be dereferenced. They all identified by uh, URIs. So if I click on uh -huh. this one, uh, that came on the wrong um, window. Let me put it here, and and we see that that's the page that we see. So that's kind of a human readable version ah, of, mm -hmm. of the information. So that's always linked back. And that's the unique identifier that we get from, from uh, uh, the RDF expert. So that's um, the author. And, and then we have, um, well, the books, I mean, the same, right? So if, if we click on a book, that should bring us to the page describing uh, the, the book with all the characteristics. And, and they are as well. Uh, we can see them uh, replicated here. Oops. As you can see in the FJ as well, so all these attributes are, are the ones that you can see here. So that's that's the base. I mean, at least the portion of the model that we're going to be using. So it's pretty pretty uh -huh. straightforward. So books, uh, authors, and categories. So the first query that we saw in the in the um, Sparkle editor was uh, how to look for a, a book by its uh, uh, ISBN number, right? So let's let's try that. So if uh, I'll start in in the FJ and I would say. Uh, well, I'm looking for a book, and uh, uh, I'm going to use uh, one of its properties. And I think the name of the property is uh, ISBN 13. I didn't know that, but apparently there are multiple variants of the ISBN depending on the uh, number of digits that it has. And I'm going uh, to use one, maybe the uh, the original ISBN uh, numbers were all spent, and then they had to come up with longer yeah. numbers. <laughs> yeah, something because you see, there's the ISBN, the, there's ISBN 10 here, there's ISBN 13. So I don't know. I'll, yeah, I'll just pick the, one of the examples that was in the list. And yeah. uh, well, again, let's go back to the to the idea that we explored before. So in Neo4j, we understand there is a node that represents the book. So we uh, you use the label here saying there is uh, something we're going to call it B, give it a variable that it's tagged as a book. So it's uh, uh, it's one of these blue nodes here, and mm -hmm. it has an attribute uh, property called ISBN thirteen, which I know of, and I want to look it up based on that. And I will my query to return that node. If I do that, I get this um, um, node representing the book, which we can explore in a tabular way and see all the attributes, everything we know about it. Right? And we see the the, the different IDs, the the, uh, the the label, the title, the name, and so on and so forth. Let's try the same thing on the RDF side, right? So and and um, mm -hmm. let's put the two the two queries side by side. So again. Uh, it, what, one thing that we'll have to do systematically in RDF is because everything is uniquely identified, we have to, and this I'm going to copy because typing that would be a bit too long. So it's 
uh, defining some some prefixes for some uh, namespaces using in the in the um, in the catalog. So the query will be uh, a select query. Oh, did, um, sorry, but but this okay. so that the, the the does this mean where the query has to to look for on these on these on, is this defining no, the, no, no. the pages or let let, or, me, uh, let me show you what it, what it's like. So we're, mm -hmm. we're gonna I mean, the first thing we're gonna do is say okay there is a triple right that describes a book. Uh, mm -hmm. That is uh, of type uh, book, and and that, here's an example of of using that uh, prefix. So here I'm using SCH, right? And SCH, as you can see, yep. is defined. Here. SCH is one of the most popular ah. vocabularies that exists, which mm -hmm. is schema.org, right? So that means that I'm looking for a book, but a book defined as in uh, schema.org. So it's kind of a way. I mean, I could I could do this if I if I wanted. Because, like you know, in in RDF, and I didn't spend enough time on that at the introduction. Everything is defined by a URI, so this would be equivalent to that. So the real type is not book, but schema.org/book. But to make the uh -huh. query more readable, we kind of define the prefix, and it would make it look a bit more nicer, like that. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So everything is defined. So I cannot because in right, you just def decided that the label is uh, be. It colon book because we just yeah. we, we just you 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 just did that and and here you have to actually take book because book is the definition of that specific yeah. item and that is i mean it, 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 there's an interesting point yes that is that by by having you know uniquely named types uh you can combine multiple types from different catalogs or different vocabularies right and maybe mm -hmm. according to one vocabulary you call it book but another one is called uh um you know um, text yeah uh, paperback or well right, what, yeah, whatever yeah. i mean but, but it's uh so the, the the fact of uniquely identifying things make it possible to do that but uh, mm -hmm. and, and we'll see and, and probably again not today how we can preserve that in neo4j if we wanted in this case we've gone for the simple approach and just uh, kept the local name which makes it nicer to query but uh okay mm -hmm. again Sorry to put that on hold, but this is another one we'll get. No, back no, this to is good. This is, this makes sense. No, let's let's continue. Let's, yeah, good. So right, so we were remember remember we were looking for a book that has a, an ISBN, right? So uh, we have uh, this book. Uh, so there's something that is a book. There's another triple that would say, and this book has an ISBN, and the ISBN is uses another prefix, which is these other uh, uh, namespace that I defined there, and it's ISBN uh, thirty, right? And I'm going to use exactly the same uh, ID that we were using before. And again, so as you can see, imagine triples, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying there is a triple where something is defined as a book, and A is is a very short version of, of typing, right? The RDF type. Uh, we know about this book that it has an ISBN, and uh, and we know about the book that it will have a title, right? So this book. Uh, we'll have, and we use another book vocabulary there, DCT, which is title, and we don't know the title, so that's what, that's what we're after. So this yep. is like, you know, the triple patterns that I use, and I say, well, I know this this book has this mm -hmm. uh, ISBN, so give me the title, so I can say, um, and, and well, ideally, why not? Give me also the, 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 the URI, the unique identifier, the book itself. So if I've made no mistake there, and I run this query, we should have got uh, ah. exactly the same Query we had before, so yeah, complete works of I mean, Voltaire. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, right, fantastic. So that's a <laughs> no, great sorry. choice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, you see that. So let let's uh, analyze again the 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 query because so we can see them side by side. I mean, and, and let's let's be fair. I mean, I, I've used this this approach because it's uh, probably the most intuitive way of saying, hey, it's all triples. It's true that if you you know when you get fluent in in uh, in um, in Sparkle. You would say, "Hey, I don't want to repeat book all the time." I mean, that makes it, uh, you know, nice and easy to understand. But the way you really would do it is, as long as you're uh, putting constraints on the same subject, you can collapse them and combine them using uh, something like this notation. So it's the same. So if multiple triple statements uh, share the same subject, the same book, you can combine it with a, a semicolon. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that might look a bit more compact, but the same same idea. So you still see that each line is a is a triple pattern, and and we get the results uh, um, pretty much in the same way, right? So again, same idea, but we kind of have to break it down in in, in three statements, whereas uh, uh, we kind of 
thought of it in a, in a more sort of compact way, but we see that is exactly the same information, right? So that was the first mm -hmm. one. So looking something up by ID. Let's go for the second one. So the second one is uh, let's get all the works by a particular author, right? So let's go back to New York Day. Let me expand this a little bit. And the one that's uh, in the suggested queries, oh, let's use it here. So it's Ian Rankin. So it's a, a British author. So uh, I'm going to start with a person in this case. Uh, and the person will have a name. And the name, I picked that one from uh, the suggested queries, is Ian Rankin. And as we found before, uh, we will see that uh, he will be connected to books, right? And the connection was creator, as we saw before, right? So yep. Ian is the creator of uh, some books, and we want to know which books are those, right? So all, all I need to do, that's the pattern. Again, uh, notes, relationship node, that's, uh, that's the, the property graph uh, uh, you know, structure. And, and what we want is to, well, give some variables here. So this is, uh, um, let's call it B, and, and we can return, uh, well, the books or maybe the titles of the books. I don't know, we can, we can choose if we want, uh, what we want to return. And we can even uh, do some, um, what, order by? So we can say- Yeah, uh, order ascending or something, yeah. Uh, order by title and we can do the sending for example right okay. so if i make no mistake i get a, a list of of the works by ian Rankin. okay so let's mm -hmm. uh again try the same thing on the other side and uh i believe we can reuse most of the um namespaces maybe i'll add a couple of additional ones or just straight replace them so um now, instead of looking for a book, I'm going to be looking for a person. So this, let's call it Ian, is mm -hmm. a person, right? And and person is again defined according to the um, schema.org. So we say there is. Um, I'll, I'll use the you know the, the the verbose version, but I think it's it's more readable. But then you know we can we can combine it. Uh, so we know that Ian is a person, and that uh, we we're going to find him by uh, by name, right? So we know that his name, uh, and that's where we use the both vocabulary, is, um, oh, sorry, I didn't want to do that. I'm going to copy this, the name as we used it here, Ian Rankin. And uh, we know that Ian authored some books. So Ian is the author of, and that was uh, creator. So actually, because the, uh, that's, that's an interesting point. Before I continue with the query, I'm, I'm being a bit, uh, um, you know, lazy here and saying there is a connection between person and book, but connections have a direction and that's important, right? The thing is, I'm ignoring it here. Uh, I'm ignoring it, but not pointing the, yes. the, yeah, the, true. the greater than, right? So what happens if I say, uh, um, you know, the direction of the arrow uh, is this one, like creator is a relationship between a person and book. Well, I get no results because actually the relationship goes the other way. So it's like for this book, we have a creator, which is uh, uh, Ian in this case, right? So there you go. So if I want to be explicit, and that's interesting in some cases, because as you can imagine, it reduces the search space. If you're specific about, I want to go from this to this other one that can help the, mm -hmm. the query engine to figure out a better, a more efficient way of, of, of running that query. But um, that's important because, you know, when we go to the triple approach, uh, we see that creator goes from book to uh, to person. So here we would need to say uh, something like there is a book by Ian and the connection is uh, VCT creator. Again, I'll refine the query in a minute, but again, triple by triple, Ian is a person, Ian has a name, which is Ian Rankin, and there's a book that has been created by Ian and uh, get me all these books. I mean, that's actually it. I don't need anything else, right? Uh, give me the the book. Well, probably give me the title of the book, right? As we said before, because if we get the the URI, that might not be very very useful. And we said that the the, the title was uh, uh, DCT. So if we get the title, let's uh, return that all the titles. And just to make it identical to the other one, we're going to do an order by. Uh, we said descending, slightly different syntax. So we'll put the, the book title there. 
So that that would be the query. Oh, okay. So, yeah. uh, and if I make no mistake, we can run that and hopefully, oh, that we should use a distinct actually because there's a there's a lot of duplication here. Uh, yeah. And we want to get rid this of that. It was in the graph also. Yeah. That should yeah, you know as we can see that yeah. pretty much the the same, right? Uh, General Rivers Noble, Wolfman, pa, 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 which hand, and so on and so forth. So that that the results are identical again. As we saw, maybe I should use a, a distinct as well. I think yeah, probably could use a distinct here as well. To to get rid of some of those. And and there we go. So again, similar results, but hmm. let's go back to the same idea. So here we kind of draw, we, we, we work at the node level, so person connected to person, whereas here we work at the statement level. What I was saying before is that we can improve this a little bit. And there are things, as I mentioned before, that can make this maybe a little bit more readable. And I, I want to do that because, you know, maybe people will say, hey, I, I don't write my sparkle like that. I wouldn't duplicate that. Yet. <laughs> Probably would do something like that. And then actually there's, a, there's something interesting that was implemented in Sparkle 1.1 that can uh, makes it possible for you to use uh, inverted relationships. So I can say, well, stay with Ian, but then traverse the relationship in the opposite way. And, and I think that used with a hat, if I make no mistake. So there's um, a book. And then from book, so I don't know, that might be a slightly more compact. So we're saying Ian is a person, has a name. Uh, Ian uh, is the creator of a book, but the, the relationship is to be traversed in the opposite way. And if we run the query, we get exactly the same. Could even mm -hmm. be uh, even made more compact, although I don't know, you know, these things I remember in my uh, uh, Sparkle days, this is not always like by everyone. So you can, uh, you can make it even more compact, but I don't know if more readable by doing something like that. So you can say, it's the creator of something that has a title and I don't even name the book. Does it make it more readable, less readable? I mean, that's probably a more compact one. I don't I don't want to make it look bad just uh, or, or, or less <laughs> more complex to follow. That's why I was using the more didactic approach. But yeah, um, no, I think for 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 me, this was great because the, the the initial thing you wrote down was was pretty clear and I could understand this is obviously more advanced, I guess, if you are when you when you are a, a sparkle pro then this is probably more like what you would write because the other one exactly. is, is is yeah but, a but bit more for um, the, yeah but what, yeah. what's important and let's go back is again this idea of hey we are thinking uh we're thinking in terms of oops let me go forward did i no what am i doing I have to go forward I don't know. You control Z is working yet. I, I totally broken it. But anyway, <laughs> no, the, I was trying doing control Z, but this this interface is a bit weird. So it's anyway. only going it's only going backward. <laughs> no way back. But yeah. I mean, in, important thing again. So in this side, I mean, this world, we work in terms of nodes and relationships. In this world, we work in terms of statements, right? So we kind of again do this atomic decomposition of every bit of information, which is a statement. So Let's modify slightly this this query, uh, which uh, and 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 that could be sometimes when we're looking for something and think of this as a catalog search, right? So we might know exactly the name of the author, or we might say, hey, I know the surname, but I can't remember what was his name. So there's yep. the sometimes you do a search with the partial information, right? So you want to do something like this. Uh, I'm I've moved to the cipher world, and I can do something like where uh, p dot name uh, contains or starts with, so, so for example, Rankin, right? So I, I, I would say, I know that the name contains Rankin or even Ankin or whatever, if I know part of it or starts with. So th these kind of things are, are pretty easy to do in, in, in Cypher because we have a number of functions like contains or starts with, let's start with, you know, with, with contains. Yep. And uh, in this case, instead of returning just the title, I want also the name because that's going to be bringing more than than just the Ian, right? So this is a, probably a longer list. And we see Monica Rankin, John Rankin, and maybe mm -hmm. there will be Ian as well, as we as we see. But that's, um, Ian, yeah. you know, that, that's a way of expanding the search when we have incomplete uh, uh, you know, information. What would that look like in, in, uh, in, the, cypher, in the Sparkle world? So mm -hmm. the thing is here, we don't know anymore uh, whether it's Ian. We know that we have uh, part of the name. And we want to apply a filter. So that's how you do it. So you say, I want to apply a filter to the name. Uh, now, the, the, the thing is, we can, uh, in order to do partial match, we need to use regular expressions. And I think that becomes a little bit techy. I mean, I, I love regular expressions, and they're super powerful. But uh, it's a bit um, 
tricky in the sense that you have to say, well, uh, we're using Ankin. Uh, things like, you know, this dot star means any character before, any character after. Like I okay. said, very, there's, there's a syntax. It's very, very powerful, and you can do many things. Like, you know, I, I want something that has, uh, I mean, that, that maybe has starts with an uh, uh, RA, and then it has um, uh, a let a character, and then continued by kin. So you can be very, very, you know, granular in what you express. But it's also, you know, a bit, oh, cool. uh, you yeah. know, technical in that sense. So you would apply a regular expression on the name and say, hey, I want, um, I mean, this is not Ian anymore. It's the, let's call it author. It's, it will be Ian, but many more as well. And as we saw before, uh, there was uh, the, the connection between the book, uh, which was what it would say DCT creator, uh, author, and then the filter on the author. And for the book we wanted, the title right and and the title i think it was again dct oh but make no mistake here and now in this case i want the the title but i want the author as well because like we saw before uh, that would um return uh, some additional and we want to just to make sure we get the same results let's order by uh, author in this case So author descending, right? So if we do that, we start with William W. Rankin, Rankin and if we do the same here, we would do uh, order by um, descending um, author, we said, right? We said author, yes. Uh, is that it? Uh, no, it's it's the name of the author, sorry. Because it, it, what we're listing here, I mean, we call it author, but it's the name of the author, right? So oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So totally. otherwise yeah. here, it would yeah. be the, the URI, the unique identifier. So it's, ah, yeah, it's okay. the name. It's the name. On the name yeah. that we apply. And uh, actually, we shouldn't be returning. That's right. We want the name of the author and the title. So if we run that, uh, we should get the, the same results, hopefully. There you go. So William Rankin, cracking the monolith, and so on and Sounds so good. forth. Yeah. Nice. So there you go. So again, yeah. back to the same idea, notes and relationships, statements or predicates or logical, uh, uh, triples, logical statements. Right. Is it making sense? I mean, I, 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 any, any, do we have any, any questions? Is it, uh, I, I have a, I mean, uh, this makes total sense to me. I, I, I can, I can kind of understand what, what you do here in Sparkle and I, I can obviously understand what, what the, what the cipher query does. So for, for me, this makes sense. It's, it's, it's. It's very interesting to see the the, the different approaches. Uh, I don't see any questions, so if if, if we yeah. have we have a couple more minutes, so before before we finish, so if if anybody in chat has any questions, always open, type type them in. Um, but yeah, it, it it makes makes a lot of sense to me. Right. So let's let's do one one final one because you know I don't want to go over the time. We we saw that um, there was um, there was an, the concept of a, the notion of a of a category, right? So we have a um, mm -hmm. and, and it's one of the suggested queries in the British Library. Why don't we do a search by um, by category, right? And 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 they suggest the crystallography. I'm going to copy that because otherwise I'm going to misspell it. But we <laughs> we saw that. <laughs> Again, start with Nia. We saw that there was a, a uh, concept, we called it, right? And the concept yes, does concept. have a, a label, right? They use uh, the, the, the label. That might be a bit confusing because in, in, in Neo4j, in property graph, <laughs> yes, that could be confusing. <laughs> the tag, but in, in RDF, the label is more kind of a human readable name for something, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we're searching for a label which is crystallography, right? Y, double L, et cetera, et cetera. So that's and we saw that books were categorized uh, in, uh, under concepts through the, um, it was subject relationship, if I remember well. So that's uh, a connection to a book. Um, and uh, yeah, we want to, uh, to find, uh, yeah, books about crystallography, right? So uh, I think that's, that was the, was that the, the query? Let me try to find it. Uh, b -b 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 find books on particular subject, for example, crystallography. So that that would be that would be it. So if we're here, so we can get a book, and as usual, we can get uh, we can return uh, the the title, and we can an alias. 
I, I, I just had to Google this because I don't really know what crystallography is. The right. uh, the Wikipedia, I mean, I can paste, paste this, the Wikipedia page in chat in a second. It mm -hmm. is not very clear to me even <laughs> what it means. <laughs> well, but uh, it, it says here, crystallography, crystallography is the experimental science of determining the arrangement of atoms in crystalline solids. Oh, there you the go. word crystallography so, is derived from the Greek word crystallon, old cold drop, frozen drop, which is with, with its meaning extending to all solids with some degree of transparency. That is awesome. Well, you know, Alex, if you want to know more about that, I have a list of 240 oh, good. <laughs> books that you have to read that you can find in the British Library. Yeah. There you go. So, and and you know that that's that's again the same idea and we can we can keep expanding and say well maybe we want to find the authors that that uh, you know the, the the i don't know someone who who created um creator and these would be a, a person um so who are the you know let's call this p and instead of being the title we put p name as the author and I don't know if I've broken something. Maybe uh, we would probably want to do a distinct. There you go. So no, we get a list of... Yeah, OK. You wanted only to show the author, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, now no, we so don't see the books anymore. Yeah, exactly. So, But we could, actually. That, that's a good point. So we could put the author uh, side by side with, uh, with um, maybe we could collect. Yeah, that was going to be an interesting query. But we have time to do it in Sparkle as well. So we could collect the, the book title. So we can get uh, the authors uh, uh, side by side with the a comma separated list of the books that they've written on crystallography. So that's a good, mm -hmm. that's a great one. So again, look at the pattern. So we have node, relationship, node, relationship, node, right? And then we specify in the return. I mean, that's kind of inverted a little bit compared to what we do in, in, in Sparkle because uh, the selection, the projection is on, on the select part. But again, let's uh, break it down in, in statements, in triples. So what would that look like? So uh, so we had, um, I need to bring some additional uh, namespaces. Let me copy those because that's the, so we uh, will start by uh, saying, okay, we're looking for, I mean, there, there will be some books, uh, right? Oh, let's start with the concept, right? A, a concept uh, is a, uh, and we use a new uh, namespace course, which is a, a vocabulary definition one, uh, a concept. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a concept that has uh, as label, and that's RDFS label, uh, crystallography. And I'm going to copy that because otherwise I'm going to misspell it. So uh, <laughs> we have a concept that's crystallography, right? Um, and we have books that are associated to that concept, right? So there are there are books uh, that have these as subject, ECT subject. That concept C uh, is maybe we could call it concept to make it more readable. Mm -hmm. And for the books, we want to get uh, their authors, right? So we get uh, we said that the book would have a, um, what was it, BCT creator. That would be the author. And as before, the author has a uh, name. And that was schema.org name, uh, author name. Right? That's it, again, step by step, triple by triple. Concept uh, is a concept, it's crystallography. We have a book with that concept. The book has an author, the author has an author name. And that's oh, oh we need we need the title as well because we wanted to combine a uh, book. Um, uh, the title was uh, I guess DCT title, and we wanted to return not only the author but also a collection of uh, well comma separated list with. Um, with the titles, with the books that they've written. And for that, uh, yeah. that's a group concat uh, operation. And I have to look at my cheat sheet here. It's group underscore concat. That's the equivalent of the collect that we use in Cypher, where you say, I want to concatenate, uh, and I'm going to apply a distinct, um, the, the, um, the titles. 
right? And I have to provide a separator uh, in, in, in collecting if j by default because it creates an array. It's different here. It produces a string as output. So uh, I have to say separator okay. uh, is, uh, let's use, uh, for example, you know, to make it identical to the other one, let's make it a comma, comma and a space. And that uh, returns uh, the book list. If I've made no mistake, so what I'm saying is, show me the author. Uh, um, actually, no, it's author name that we want to make it identical to the other one. So show me the author name uh, and a concatenation, and that produces a string, which is different to what we saw in Neo, uh, combining the titles of the books. And yeah, we can apply the, the order by that we used before, which is um, author name. So let's give that a try. And if I run this, hopefully we get the, the same, um, not the same. And it's because, why is that? Oh, yes, they are, right. It's, I had I had scrolled. Oh, no, it's might be something. Some some uh this is the, the guy is here but he is neo here but he says with an x and in sparkle is a z is his first name mm -hmm. so why can it be so what, what am i doing here so we have a concept book creator person so we have the name order by author descending and that's uh, an interesting one so oh because it's yeah i see what's happening so here we're using the um name property yeah hmm, because it looks like you know because we have this yeah it's inverted right so we're looking at it is inverted exactly yeah that's that's why it is uh missing is it because or I'm not, looking yeah. at, at a different property maybe if i yeah, that's an interesting one. What if I look at label? Is that changing anyway? No, it's still, I'm clearly looking at the, a different senior zoo. Well, I'll have to debug that one and find, I think it's, it must be related to, um, to the property that we're looking at because what 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 is 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 name first name and last name or is that um, yeah yeah that's um do we have a last name property if we order by if we, in, in neo if we, we go can, into last name what if we return the author and we can um see what property are we using so this author has um a family name given name right name. oh because it has oh see add. we have two yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> that okay, is different that's, okay that's yeah but anyway well that's yeah. uh that's uh oh i i realized that we're going over the over the time but you know i hope that was uh i'll stop here because i mean we could go on but i hope that's given us a bit of a, an overview of kind of the the experience from working with one and all the paradigms and, and as we see is the same data but um you know in one, we're kind of more in a in a object uh, uh, kind of entity relationship uh, um, world, whereas on the other one, we're kind of in a more predicate statement based world. So that's you know mm -hmm. what we had planned for today. I hope that was useful. I don't know if there's uh, questions or anything else, but happy to uh, to take them offline if there's anything. No, that was very useful, and we can I can we can stay on for for some more time for sure. Um, so we have. Um, two questions one one i would like to keep in the end one is, is is from antonio covering this directly is uh he says could it be useful to provide book lists from concepts related to crystallography let's say symmetry from the same author or maybe others related to him i guess depending on what the data what kind of data we have um if if, if we have more than one concept we could kind of like find similar books to to this i don't know if that is uh, something we can absolutely. cover at a later yeah, no, no, absolutely, and, and we could we could actually run it. Actually, my my next query, I mean, maybe the ones that I've run are not the most interesting from the point of view of of you know 
what they return it was more a simple mm. way of comparing the syntaxes of the two mm. of the two query languages but yeah the, the, actually the the next one i had was look at you know uh, uh for example re related uh categories i mean that's something that we could uh, let let's can, can, I, can we share the screen again can we yes of course a bit more so let's let's do that quickly because that's that's very interesting so let's say we um uh, I don't know if that's exactly what the question was, but we can say what are you know categories related to crystallography, right? So and related can be well if um, if a book is tagged as uh, uh, as uh, about crystallography. Sometimes books have have multiple tags, right? Books mm -hmm. let's do that. So uh, let's say this book is about crystallography and jewelry. I mean uh, whatever. Uh, so but there's there's other related uh, concepts, right? Which are those? And and the definition of related is uh, effectively the fact that there are books that combine the two the two um, concepts. So related concept. So what are those? And we can do a count of our books. I don't know. If that's going to be. There you go. So that's that's an interesting one because that I mean what what, I, what we're saying and let's do an maybe we could do an order by but I didn't do it. So what I'm saying here is that uh, there's um, there are six books right that actually are about crystallography and electron microscopy microscopy whatever that is. But so <laughs> these are, these are two yeah. kind of somehow related concepts right. So it's a way of exactly maybe yes expanding a search right. So. Because you're interested in crystallography, maybe you want to have a look at books about electron microscopy, right? Because there are works in our catalog that combine these two categories, right? So it's as simple as you know defining your traversal, and that's a very simple way of doing it. And we'll probably go uh, in other sessions into more sophisticated ways of doing that using algorithms, right? And looking at, at, at richer structures in the graph. But a simple way of doing it is, hey, these two topics are related because they have books in common, right? Same with transmission, electron microscopy, and many more. So that's, uh, yeah, a very, very good and, and, and probably a more interesting type of query. But <laughs> like I say, today we were kind of focusing more on the pure, purely syntactic aspect. So how to do exactly the same thing in Cypher and, and, in, and in Sparkle. But yeah, very, very good one. And that's, uh, that's um, a probably a more interesting query. <laughs> No, but yeah, t totally. Uh, thank you for that question, Antonio, uh, and and thanks for show showing that. I, I I don't think we, we, yeah, this is this is great for for today. I think we had we had a good, um, like you said, we we, we we did the groundwork uh, today, and we kind of wanted to show what what the differences are, what the how it works, and then uh, in in one of the following sessions, we're gonna go into a little bit more more details, um, uh, and 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 I guess in. If if I don't you don't have to do this now, but in con guessing in RDF, this this kind of query is is, is would would oh. also be possible, right? Yeah, in, in yeah. Sparkle. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, it's the same same information. I mean, the question is, and I guess that you know the 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 bottom line here is like you are the 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 person who's going to have to maintain these queries. I mean, that's what it looks like in this world. That's what it looks like in RDF world. Both are possible. Even if we have this information in a relational database, you would be able to express the queries. I wouldn't like to spend a session on that. That might be a bit painful, but it's also possible. <laughs> uh, but you know, the, the, the thing is, you know, the, the, your choice of, of formalism on storing data and, and manipulating data has implications from the point of view of, you know, the code maintenance, many others. I mean, things like, how do you find skills in the market? I mean, maybe the people joining us today are experts in one or the other, but if you're a project manager that, or a product owner that has to make a choice, I mean, am I going to find talent around Sparkle? I'm going to find talent around uh, a Cypher. What's you know, how hard is it going to be one and the other? And and that again, mm -hmm. great topics for discussion that we might not answer today, but you know, go for example to uh, Stack Overflow, right? And look which are the 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 the, the, the labels or tags that are used more frequently. What what's people out there using more? So these are uh, the kind of consequences or, or, or things that are derived from from what we're kind of analyzing today. Yep. And then uh, finishing one more question, I think that's that's great from Peter. Is that, do either Neo4j or RDF allow for storing relationship types uh, or the relationships as nodes? So 
uh, I, I guess obviously Neo4j as this being a database uh, storing data in, in, in there is, is, is one of the, the core, <laughs> the core strengths yeah. and the core purposes of, of, of Neo4j is, is how is that with, with Sparkle and with RDF? Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know, in, in, um, in, in Neo4j, like you say, Alex, I mean, uh, relationships are first class citizens and they are persistent. So if we dive a little bit under the hood of what we've seen today, uh, well, uh, th there's behind the interface and the queries that we've been written today, there is a, there is a, um, a query engine and there's a store that specializes in storing triples on one side and specializes in stored, storing graphs on the other side, right? So the, the, you know, the, the, the first thing is, you know, you, you've seen triples, right? Triple is a, is a table with three columns. Right? We, we have a big, uh, a, a big store with, uh, with all your triples, all the information of the, the, the catalog. So what's happening, and we haven't explored more, you know, deeper uh, um, patterns of exploration, like things like how do you, is, is there any path connecting this author with this other author? We didn't get into this sort of, of, of um, syntax elements, but uh, you know, the problem behind the scenes in a, in a triple story is that there's a lot of joining because, you know, table uh, relationships in a table are computed at query time, right? So you have to navigate, you know, subject, predicate, object, and then this object connects to another one and so on and so forth. And this is a continuous joining effort, which at scale, uh, you know, will will degrade in, in, in performance. In Neo4j, relationships are persisted natively. So there is a physical pointer connecting an author with a book, right? So what, when we explore that, uh, we're actually chasing a pointer. We're not scanning an index or, or doing a self-join, which is where, you know, where we see the implication in performance. And, and you know, the math is pretty simple. When you're scanning an index, which is what's happening when you do a join, uh, you know, if your uh, data set grows by an order of magnitude, the time it takes will double. It, it, that, that's as simple as that, because the, 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 the cost of exploring mm -hmm. an index is logarithmic. That's, that's, it doesn't get better than that. In Neo4j, it's con constant because we only are chasing a pointer that already exists. So whether your graph is uh, 80 million, like we saw today, or, or, or 800 million, you know, the cost of traversing is, uh, a relationship is constant and it's pre-computer. It's true that we pay an extra price when we write, right? And it's funny because that's something that I've heard recently about, you know, Neo4j being particularly performant at write, which we are, by the way, because the performance is excellent, but that's where we pay an additional price at persisting this relationship to get a, a lightning speed read. I don't know if the question was was in that direction in terms of how things are persisted and what the implications are when we query, or if it was more about also, because uh, you know one of the traditional limitations in RDF, not anymore, used to be that you cannot have uh, attributes in relationships. Like we show in, in, the, in the model before uh, that JB worked for Neo4j uh, from that date or with that role, right? So that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's something that in Neo4j is natural because relationships, just like nodes, can have a set of attributes, right? That characterizes them. You know, for a long time, RDF didn't allow that. Now there's a, a proposed expansion of RDF called RDF star that actually makes it possible to have uh, essentially a triple as the subject of a triple. So it's, it's a bit convoluted, oh, but it, it, okay. it kind of <laughs> lets you say the, about the connection saying that JB works for Neo4j, I want to add that that happens from uh, that date, right? So uh, like okay. a statement about a statement. So it's a bit going mm -hmm. meta, as you can see. That's, 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 <laughs> really, uh, that's but, exactly. So that's, that's one way, because, you know, traditionally yeah. what you need to do in RDF before that was to create an intermediate node, right? Like reify, as we used to call it, uh, uh, create something in, in, in the middle that says there is a connection between uh, this person and this organization. And there is where I put my, my attributes. That was kind of the workaround. So that's still um, valid. And, and in some cases that might be your choice, mm -hmm. but at least there's this RDF star, which is start to be supported by most triple store vendors that all works around that. But um, I, I don't know whether that was one or the other question. I hope we kind of covered a little bit of, of what it's, and if not just I, I think we did. If not, exactly write, write us a comment, tweet, tweet us, or or uh, send us um, a message on Discord or in the community forums, and we'll have a look at that. Uh, and we can we can maybe cover it one of our upcoming um, sessions of this series. Um, there was one more question. Uh, maybe we take this offline though and put the answer to that in the description. But uh, if you have happen to have any reading material like books or or, or blogs or anything else, um, which we might. Uh, 
you know, recommend to people if they're into the topics, semantics, ontologies, RDF, uh, knowledge yeah, graphs. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And we will, we will, we will touch a lot and a lot of those topics in the coming in the coming sessions. So again, today was kind of a gentle introduction. And uh, and by the <laughs> way, we'll be we'll be sharing all the code that we've written today. So I'll put it on on GitHub and and we'll we'll share the link with people so that they can reproduce exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, in, in their own environment. But yes, we have plenty of references and resources that we'll be, we'll be sharing. I mean, we can do that after this session or in the coming yep. ones, but um, definitely. Perfect, sounds good. All right, well, with that, I think we, we, are, we are done for today. Thank you for joining. Thank you for, uh, for making this first session uh, interactive and, and, and fun for, for Jesus and myself. I, I definitely learned a lot. Uh, I think it was interesting to see. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to next session. Um, we haven't exactly booked that out. Uh, it's going to be in a month, so uh, probably around beginning of March. Um, yeah, but we, I think it was we something will put like it, uh, the first, uh, the first, uh, what's it today? Tuesday, first Tuesday, Tuesday in a first, month. First Tuesday in a month, so I guess it should be the first. Yeah, it works. So. Uh, I think maybe it's the first of March. Uh, if not, then well, you'll you'll see it uh, you'll see it here on uh, for for this series. Anyways, um, thank you for joining. Thank you, uh, Jesus, for presenting and for taking the time. That was really good. Uh, I'm seeing you all next week um, for another um, graph database or DB uh, discover or DB with Michael and myself. Tomorrow, actually, on uh, same space uh, and time, uh, there will be a PHP and Neo4j session with my co colleague Florent. So uh, stick around to that if, if that's something that's interesting you. And yeah, with that, take care, everybody. Have a good um, rest of your week and uh, see you soon.